Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the news today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool that will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, October 9th. I'm Ben Berkeley here with Sarah Friedman, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're looking to China, where young adults, many of whom spend years hard in pursuit of their academic and professional goals, are entering a job market to find there aren't any. So how are they coping with this faltering economy? One increasingly common road is something being called full-time childhood, which is pretty much what you're imagining it to be. We'll tell you more about this trend in a moment, but first, let's run through the stories making headlines in the world of business and tech today. It's not even Halloween yet, so naturally it's time to talk about the start of the holiday shopping season. It's kicking off now, whether we like it or not, and there's one group who definitely likes it, and that's online retailers. The e-commerce slice of holiday shopping in the U.S. this year is expected to hit $221 billion at least, which would be a 4.8% increase over last year's number. This is according to a report from Adobe Analytics which estimated that over 51% of shopping will take place on mobile devices this year, best in computers for the first time. After 123 years of ranking restaurants, the Michelin Guide is going to branch out into hotels. The publication announced it will begin awarding keys to global hotels that meet its specific criteria. Hackers use stolen credentials to access 23andMe accounts, claiming they have data from as many as 7 million users. They initially leaked 1 million lines of data from the genetic testing site, including names, profile pictures, birth dates, and more, and said they would sell stolen data for $1 to $10 per account. If that 7 million user mark is accurate, it would represent about half of 23andMe's total user base. AMC shares surged 11.5% on Friday afternoon after the movie theater chain announced that Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour concert film, raked in $100 million in advanced ticket sales. And listen, as members of the media, we are duty-bound to include Taylor Swift's name at least once in every episode. It was either this update, which, you know, we're talking about a meme stock here in AMC, or something about the NFL and Travis Kelsey. So this was where we landed. Our apologies. Let's move on. Delta will pay $27 million to settle claims from customers who said they weren't refunded for flights canceled due to COVID. Thus far, U.S. airlines have paid out $600 million in pandemic-related refunds. This payout could have been a lot worse for Delta. Only 19% of customers who were eligible for refunds submitted their claims. And I'm not sure why I'm telling you this or what you're meant to do with this information, but we do have groundbreaking Crocs news today. The casual footwear maker is coming out with a cowboy boot. The limited-time offering debuts on October 23rd, which is Crocs Day, obviously. This is a fan holiday during the month of Proctober. I don't have further words on that other than to say that the new boot features Western-style stitching and has gibbets in the form of spurs that you can spin if you want to. Pricing was not immediately available for this product, but for the kind of person who gets excited about hearing about this, let's assume no number is too high. For the rest of us, No thanks, and let's keep this going. Okay, on to our top story for today, full-time children, the endlessly fascinating job title that's trending for young adults in China. Sarah, can you tell us what's behind the phenomenon? Also, what's in the job description? Yes, so essentially the situation in China is that Many young people who have been spending years pursuing academic and professional pursuits, working very hard, are entering a job market where there are no jobs or at least no jobs that would be financially or even 
intellectually fulfilling for them. So there's a big mismatch and it's causing a lot of issues. And so per the Los Angeles Times, the term full-time children is emerging in China, which literally it's what it sounds like. People are taking jobs as children. (laughs) They're staying home and they're helping their parents with errands, cleaning, and doing a lot of the caretaking that normally goes unpaid and unrecognized is actually becoming a job, whether they are actually making money from their parents and and getting paid or they're just not paying for things like rent. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this makes sense in a culture that is known to be very family driven, but also this work culture has always been brutal. We know in the States about this like 996 culture of like working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. And this feels like a really big departure from that. Yeah, exactly. It is it is a big departure. And I think there's some some cultural pushback happening from the president in China kind of saying essentially like you need to take whatever job you can get and you shouldn't be complaining about it, even if it's below your pay grade or but that's extremely hard to hear when you've spent years studying and training for really, you know, specialized and high caliber positions. And the unemployment rate among 16 to 24 year olds in urban areas at this point has hit 21.3%. That was back in June. Notably, China has stopped reporting the unemployment rates because it hit that record high. And on the flip side, their higher education enrollment ratio reached 59.6% in 2022, which is extremely high. So again, just to underscore the fact that many, many people are are going to school, going to college, achieving these degrees, and, and then they're entering this job market that is looking kind of dismal. What a, it's it's just this very fascinating mix of of tales and like as you're saying like the president's very much I, I think he, his direct quote was like eat bitterness essentially was how that translated which no thanks but it's a really interesting thing to obviously have this very hard reality that that you know young adults they're facing they've worked so hard to get this point it must be so demoralizing and then also they're getting kind of a soft landing in a way that like I feel like we would not call it this in the States, even if this is happening, and in some ways can be quite a spin on having a lagging job market. But I guess assuming assuming that being a full-time child isn't for everyone, I'm just curious what other trends you've seen emerge out of this like really squeezed labor force. Yeah, this is honestly just the latest of many. The first that I heard about at least was called lying flat. And that's a term that was coined by Gen Zers and millennials to basically describe like getting off of the treadmill that is constant achievement. And there's a newer version of that, which is just a little bit of a more dismal iteration that's just translates to let it rot. So it's about just completely giving up or kind of getting closer to the end faster, (laughs) essentially. And people are even throwing now resignation parties to celebrate quitting their jobs because of burnout and just a general dissatisfaction. So I think with the young people in China, there's just this general sense of, you know, not being fulfilled by their work after after lifetimes of working extremely hard, which I think anyone who's experienced that knows how horrible it is. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously this is all under the backdrop of a really, I mean, every everywhere has a really complicated economy right now, but this is a country where, you know, there were strict pandemic lockdowns that lasted very a very long time. There's just like consumer spendings down, debt is up, real estate market, not great. You know, I think that the scale of this problem is also given just this incredible population over there, really staggering where, you know, even when you're talking about like lying flat, I think we saw an outlet that was projecting that maybe even 16 million young people are currently lying flat and that, you know, that that's just like when you really factor in what the actual unemployment rate is within this segment of the labor market, kind of stunning, really, really high numbers, like 
getting in the ballpark, maybe even half of that population. And so, Sarah, I do have to ask you this this question of if you could have taken on a full time child role when you were coming out of college, would you have accepted the job? You know what? I would need to read the fine print on that one and just understand, you know, how much is going to be going to chores, how much will be reading the back of a cereal box and watching cartoons. I would definitely need to, you know, ask the employers for the details there. That's fair. I think my my terms similarly would be, you know, if I can just like go full child mode in my times where I'm not working, then I feel like that's that's a little more appealing. I'm happy to just like eat sugary breakfast cereals every day. It's something I feel like I don't get to do in this current version of adulthood. But uh, we have to be full-time children in the sense of writing childish things. So we're going to get back to work. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show today. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we will see you tomorrow. Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win. A lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.